Hello. Welcome back to another pen talk. Today, I'm going to do something a little different. I try to do something a little different uh, with uh, each of the videos. But uh, many of the viewers have asked about restoring vintage pens. I do restore a lot of pens. I would say I'm still a novice restorer. I've uh, spent time with uh, uh, Richard Zorn and Mr. Bender and, and other people that are just magicians at restoring pens. I've been doing it for uh, many, many years. I'm still a amateur. But uh, what I've done over the uh, course of time is just develop some techniques that work well for me. And also, I know my limitations as to uh, what I can repair and cannot repair uh, as far as pen goes. So, uh, opening up a box of my pens that I've collected over time, I came across these two pens and decided that they would make uh, good subjects for a restoration video. One of the things that I like is the similar coloring in the two pens. Let's take a look at this one first. Uh, I'm not used to this light at this angle, but we'll get it going. So on the clip is the name New Banker. It's one of those uh, lesser known brands of pens, uh, mostly from the 30s. And they're mostly known for their uh, combos, which are pen and pencil combinations. I do have a few uh, New Banker combos. I switched pen angles so we don't have a problem with the shadowing like we did before. I think uh, this will polish up and look really well when it's restored. I'll bring some luster back to the metal. I like the fact that it has uh, the lever is inside of um, a metal frame, kind of like you'll find on uh, some of the higher end pens. Uh, there's a good threading on the cap, which is always, always a good sign. It's a small section. It's a steel nib, which is uh, typical of uh, this uh, mid-tier type of pen. The second pen we're looking at is a pen uh, that you may or may not recognize. It is missing one small uh, band at the bottom of the cap. Uh, but uh, if you uh, look at the engraving on the barrel, which there was no engraving on the new banker, you'll see it's a Parquette, which is the um, low tier brand that Parker came out with, the only lever fill models that they made. Uh, this pen, from the shape and design, from what I've read on the web with, from Richard Bender and, and other people, this was made in 1939 or, or 1940. Uh, it's interesting that they have patented on the top of the clip here. Uh, very simple uh, lever, but I do think this pen will clean up. It's in a little bit better condition. I think the resins and the way this pen was made, they're a little bit higher quality than the new banker. Again, it unscrews uh, and a lot of good threads, so that'll be uh, something I need to work on. What becomes an anomaly with this pen is the clip, sorry, is the nib. Uh, it's a parquet nib. It looks like it's a fine nib. It'll clean up really nicely, but there's a, a 3.6 at the bottom of the nib with a little dot at the lower right. So Parker used a numbering system to date their pens. So 3.6 is actually the third quarter of 1936, which would place this nib as three years before this pen was produced. So they may have taken a nib out of inventory and put on this pen. And the dot is something that they started using in the 40s to tell what quarter the pen was made in. So that would be the first quarter. So that's a little bit of an anomaly on this nib. Uh, we'll start with this pen first. So the first thing I, I obviously try to do is take off the section. So this is my handy little gripper, uh, the Goulet Cellar Gripper. Uh, you may recognize this as the rubber band if, uh, if you are in a, a section where they sell live lobsters. So this works really nicely, just tighten it around the section. The first thing I do is try to turn it, because a lot of these are threaded, and this doesn't want to turn at all. Try to loosen it up a little bit, turn it, I get nothing. So when that happens with a pen like this, the first thing I'll do is I have my uh, container of water. 
I put W on it because I also have one of these with an ammonia mixture in it. So I just put it in here and let it set for a while. I'm going to have the, the water so it doesn't get up to the lever. Now it'll go up to the lever. So we'll let that soak and I could let that soak for days. Uh, one of the things that I've learned in working on pens is never force anything. Uh, try to get it to work easily. So we'll look at the, the new banker next to see if we can disassemble this one. And right away this uh, section just moves very easily and it comes out very easily. So uh, to me the first thing I notice is uh, there's uh, no sack material at the bottom of the section. So this pen has been taken apart before, potentially to be restored. We'll look inside the barrel and there's no bladder, old bladder with inside the barrel. Um, the lever works nicely. So this pen is uh, ready for uh, restoration. So one of the first things I'll do is I'll do a cleaning of the nib section. So another plastic cup and this one has an ammonia solution in it. It's just a small amount of ammonia in water. Yeah, I found ammonia is the best material that I've found to remove any dried ink. This is a, a rubber um, device which I got at Radio Shack when they were still around. And Ron Zorn, I'm sorry I called him Richard earlier, but Ron Zorn of Main Street Pens, the first person that I worked with at a pen show to repair some pens, uh, suggested I go to Radio Shack and pick this up. It fits very nicely over almost all sections. And what it allows you to do is uh, put the the nib in the water and run solution through the nib in the feed. As we bring it out we'll see that there is some ink that's coming out. Not a lot, so this is in relatively good clean condition. I'll run this through a couple times. I'm a firm believer in getting this part of the pen as clean as possible. So when the liquid starts coming out clean, I'm pretty certain that that's uh, been cleaned. I'm going to take the water one in which the Parker is setting in, and I'm going to do a water rinse after the ammonia. Again, this is just to ensure that the ammonia is gone. Ammonia will evaporate over time, so it, it's not going to do anything, but I'd rather just have it clean as, right away from the beginning. So now I'm very comfortable that uh, the nib and section are fairly clean. As you can see, the, the nib is a little bit brighter than it was before because the ammonia solution does do a good job at removing any uh, residue ink. It's always good to have a paper towel handy to, to dry things off. So if, um, if this wasn't able to be cleaned easily with this syringe, I also have an ability of knocking out the feed section. I have a knockout block with some pins, which I uh, got online from one of the repairers. So we're going to set that aside, and we're going to take a look at uh, just cleaning off probably years of grime and oxidation and other things. And I use these cleaning pads. This is my first go-to for any type of cleaning of the plastic, hard rubber, or metal components of a pen. And I just basically just uh, buff the pen. So one of the things that I do is, is I'll hold the pen um, in cloth or paper so my oils don't get on the material. Because uh, in the end I'm going to wax this and then I'll feel the material is uh, pretty much preserved. As you can see the luster starts to come up really quickly. I mean it doesn't take much effort at all with this type of uh, polishing pad. And I'll show you a link. I buy these on Amazon. Uh, they're still readily available. What I like about this, some people might use a, a paste or something, and sorry about the camera vibrating. But I just, just buff this all over, going in many directions, back and forth. We'll lift up the lever and uh, do a little buffing on the sides. It, just to bring back the luster of the pen, kind of so it can be what it looked like when it may have been new sitting in the, the shop before someone first bought it. So 
So hopefully there you can see real time how the pen really brightens up and takes on a new look. So we're going to do the same type of uh, procedure with the cap. And as you can uh, you notice, it doesn't take much effort to take off uh, 50, 60 years of corrosion or use. A lot of times the center band moves on these pens. So I'll do, uh, you know, movement horizontally so it doesn't, uh, you know, <clears throat> just move the band around and it actually does do some polishing. And again, as we saw with uh, the barrel, this cleans up very well. Uh, I kind of picked this because I kind of expected it to because my other experience with New Balance uh, sorry New Balance they're, they're the shoes that I wear but so I apologize about that we had an interruption uh, the battery uh, ran out on my camera one of the challenges of being uh, the editor the filmmaker the actor is uh, you can't keep track of everything so uh, as you can see the uh, cap is cleaned up fairly well I mean it looks it looks nice so now the next step that I do is I put wax on it this is a very popular wax used by a lot of restorers some people use canuba wax I've gotten into that and I think it might work better on hard rubber but I found that uh, this overall does an excellent job so I use this is just a you can get these cloth shops they come in a roll like paper towels and they just have a little bit more uh, <clears throat> they don't wear and they don't shred like paper towels do so I find these are good for putting a little bit of wax on it and again I, I grab it with uh, the cloth and I just uh, apply it again I just want all the surfaces evenly coated uh, this uh, was used by the British Museum to preserve things in the museum so it, it has properties that will keep that luster in there for a while I'll pop the lever and also do a little bit on the lever. Again, the, the key thing is, is after we've done the polishing, uh, we want to put on some type of preservative coat on top to keep it looking nice forever. Now we'll do the same thing to the cap. You just need a little bit of wax. I mean, I got this uh, wax probably about six months ago and I've used uh, maybe about a fifth of it. It's a small container, but you don't need much. A little bit goes a long way, as they say. The main purpose is just to, to coat all the surfaces. We spent some time uh, polishing them, so this will bring out the polish. And also adds another dimension to it. There's a, some cleaning in this wax, so it does also... Uh, show the details more than it would without the, the wax coating on it. Yeah, I try to get all around the clip. It's an area that does seem to corrode a lot. The wax dries pretty quickly, so uh, we'll do a soft cloth buff. You know, within a few minutes, so I'll put my cap back on the wax. Put some of these materials away. And then we'll do the cap. So I'm, I'm impressed with the way that this has come out. You know, it certainly has uh, the luster in the sheen as one would expect. I think that center band I could do a little bit more work on, but uh, for the purpose of this video and showing restoration, uh, that should work. So the next thing is to find a bladder to go into the pen. So I have a series of bladders that I've uh, collected over time. Uh, they come in different sizes. Uh, some of them are numbered like a 14 through 22. Um, with looking at this pen, my first response is I think like a 17 would work well. So let me find a 17 in my uh, collection here. Here's the bag that it comes in. As you can see, it's from fountainpensacks.com. Unfortunately, uh, they are no longer, well, they're going to stay in business until the end of December 2000, middle December 2015, but then uh, they're, they're not going to be uh, doing this anymore. So as you can see, it's a long 
uh, rubber sack and it's also called a straight sack. There's no necking. I generally prefer these because the necking ones, uh, I always cut them to size. So a lot of times the necking material you'd cut off because it won't fit. So as you can you know, look at, I try to get the bladder pretty much to the end of the barrel. So if we take the section here, we'll see where we'll need to cut the, the bladder to fit into the barrel. So I'd say right about there looks good. So there's a lot of different schools of thought on this. I have these really uh, excellent uh, small scissors which make a clean cut. So now the bladder is, is ready to be attached to the end of the section. Now we're going to get into um, a little bit of controversy, at least uh, from some of the uh, fellow repairers. I use Elmer's glue. I, I think you should put some type of uh, glue at the uh, connection of the uh, <clears throat> bladder or the sack to the section. These are a great set of uh, pliers which let you expand it so it can be fit on the section easily. So we'll just put just a tiny bit of glue here. The traditional thing is to use a shellac here, which dries very hard. Uh, this shellac, when I take these apart, a lot of times in the old sack is still there. The shellac uh, it makes it difficult to work on. This is a, um, a glue that will work to seal it, which is really all I want. And then uh, to kind of keep it in place. So this becomes a little bit tricky, and I've never done this in front of the uh, camera. So we spread this out and we just work it over the section. And then remove the device. I gotta remember to stay off of the table so it doesn't vibrate. So now the, and I do a little twist just to get everything in part and it should be pretty straight on the section. So we'll set that aside and I generally let it set for uh, I'd say a day before I reassemble it just to let the glue and everything set. So meanwhile we're going to go back to the Parker that we couldn't get the section out of. It's been soaking, uh, you know, through this video into the water. So we're going to find my uh, rubber and we'll see if it uh, is going to move at all and it's not moving it at all. So there is a device which I've gotten these are called section pliers. I don't like to use them but in this case I have used them a few times and my first response is I don't think this is going to budge and I'm right. So that's going to soak a little bit longer. So we'll resume this video a little bit later and uh, hopefully uh, that'll be done. At least the next thing will be reassembling the new banker, inking it up and putting nib to paper. Welcome back to day two of uh, pen restoration. The uh, sack has dried for a day. So what we're going to do is we're going to talc the sack. This is just pure talcum powder. A lot of the pen repair places sell it. Uh, if you get baby powder or whatever, it's going to have uh, other elements in it, like a perfume or whatever, which you don't want to have. And I generally like to have the sack inserted so the uh, nib faces the lever. As you can see, it's a little tight, so uh, the 17 sack was probably a little bit big, but it will work itself out. I'm going to do the lever a few times to get everything working. And now we're going to fill the pen with ink and write with it. I haven't looked at the nib. I'm going to write with it first to determine if uh, there's any tuning that needs to be done. So we're using our Serenity Blue. You can hear a little bubbling. I'm not going to try to overfill it. Just enough to uh, saturate the feed and get it ready to uh, write with. We have to do a little wipe uh, just to uh, clean off any excess ink. I think this is a small pen so uh, we'll cap it. As you can see it uh, fits nicely in the hand. 
It's a very light pen. Um, I would say maybe 16, 17 grams total with ink and everything else in it. So let's see how this nib works. Well, my first response is, um, it's a great steel nib. It's nice and smooth. As you can see, it's a really fine line. I'm impressed. I'm very happy with it. So, uh, again, hopefully you've been able to get an appreciation for turning uh, vintage, maybe not something that someone would consider desirable into a nice writing instrument which uh, is a nice addition to uh, my collection. Yep, I think this uh, nib is, is great. You can consider this was a tier two pen in the 30s. Probably sold for a dollar. That seems to be their target uh, for these types of pens. So now we've uh, had one success. So now we're gonna go back to the Parker which has been soaking for a day now and I have put ink inside the barrel so we got ink on both sides of the section or sorry water on both sides of the section and hopefully what's holding in the section is dried ink so in, in that situation uh, we hopefully should be able to remove the section easily and again as I said uh, before if it doesn't remove easily then uh, we're going to go to plan B which is to use some type of heat on it because they could have used that shellac that we talk about. Ah! It is moving. That is beautiful. So this was a day of soaking and it came out relatively easily. I didn't have to force it. As you can see there's a dried bladder at the end of the section and there's a, a and dried up sack inside the uh, the barrel. So now we're going to go into the cleaning stages um, and take it from there. When I'm working up the dried up parts of the pen, I put down an old sheet of newspaper just to keep everything clean. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, get the old bladder out of here. As you can see, it's in pieces, and uh, there was water in inside there, obviously. So we'll clean that up before it stains. We'll get out the uh, trusty LED light to uh, take a look inside the barrel and as we can see there's still pieces of bladder in there. So these are interesting uh, pliers <laughs> that were designed specifically for removing bladders. As you can see they go in very nicely and it's not easy to grab those bits and pieces in there. Ah, there we go. So the bladder comes out, and we'll also notice one other thing is the J bars come out. So that we'll need to, to work on. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff inside of, of, of the barrel. So we'll work on cleaning those up over time. And also cleaning up the J bar. Uh, because of the way it's bent here at the end, this may not be usable, but I have replacement J bars. They're relatively easy to find, and if you're adventurous, you could probably build your own. So I was going to show um, a little technique that I do to remove the old bladder. This is a scalpel that I got on eBay, I think, for like 8 bucks, and it came with uh, 10 extra replaceable blades, which I haven't had to use. So I just kind of scrape along, you know, try not to dig into the section just to get off uh, you know the big chunks of the bladder. As you can probably tell this was put on with probably a shellac so it's quite hard. Uh, this pen may not have been used for 60, 70, maybe 80 years because it was made you know in the late 30s so not quite 80 years but probably close to it. Uh, a lot of the, the, the work on pens is just taking your time you know, looking at what's there, understanding how the pen was put together. 
So it's cleaned up pretty good. And there's crap coming out of this barrel still yet now. So that's, uh, that's how it works. So one of the things that we're going to do is check out the ink flow in the nib. So one of the things that I do after I scrape off uh, the old bladder is I just take some emery paper or it's a cloth instead of a sandpaper it's a cloth paper a lot of this is used in the automotive uh, repair business to sand down uh, fiberglass when they put it on so I just kind of do this as a final get any little bits and pieces that might be there wipe it down so I think we're in good shape I'm going to take the uh, little bulb we have and we're going to go into the uh, that sounds really good. So one of the things I didn't talk about when I did this on the new banker pen is that's a good flow coming out of the nib. Uh, I can pretty much tell uh, whether it's going to be a wet writer or a dry writer by how much flow I can push through the nib and feed using this bulb. Uh, <coughs> ammonia solutions is coming out very clean so I think this nib is in good shape and I don't think there'll be any problems once we get it fully repaired to, uh, to have it work well. I'll do just a, a rinse in water just to get any of the ammonia out of it. So once we got the section open, uh, things worked out pretty well for us. Now that we have the pen apart and uh, we know it can be uh, restored to writing order, we're going to do a polishing. I mean, I think the colors of these pens are quite unique and quite interesting and hopefully with a little polishing will bring up the detail. We need to have the, the rag that I talk about so same process that we used on the new banker you know just a variety of uh, circular movements back and forth movements just to bring out the details and I think a lot of this what it does it just takes off the the years of grime that's built up on this pen and uh, allows the true color of the when the pen was new to come through. Now the gold plating and a lot of this may have been gold filled probably just low level it was just gold plating but you know it doesn't really wear off that easily with this type of uh, polishing and hopefully you can see that uh, the colors have come out much more intense. You can see that the lever is shining up nicely. We'll just uh, focus a little bit uh, of attention on the lever and get off some of the grime that's been built up in there. And there it's looking uh, a little better. So we're going to do the same process with uh, the cap. And again, let's take a look at the clip before and we'll see if the magic of this polishing pad comes through. I just, uh, I've, exp you know, polished stuff a lot over the years and this pad just to me is just the most amazing thing I've ever used. Um, you know, liquids are nice, but they can be sometimes too aggressive. Sometimes they might not work well with the plastic, but this, uh, Polishing pad works on almost any type of material, even hard rubber. If it's a soft material, it's not the thing you want to use on a soft material, but uh, with a pen, there's not much soft material used. So hopefully um, you can see that the clip has come out quite well. I mean, there's still a little bit of tarnish in there. Sometimes I think that just, uh, I call it a patina. You know, this is a pen that's over 60 years old. So you're going to expect some age on it. I'm just going to do, it's hard to sometimes in front of the camera keep the pad focused on the areas that we want to clean up. So we're going to focus a little bit more because I think the, the clip can come almost back to mint condition with the right amount of careful attention. So um, now we'll take a look at the clip in uh, 
really uh, almost back to restored condition. And you can see we also got some, you know, <coughs> luster back into this one band left, which is a little bit loose on the on the bottom of the cap. So we're going to apply some wax to preserve the uh, nice shine and nice color that we've gotten in the uh, in the barrel and cap. The clip is, uh, sorry, the lever is loose because there's no uh, bar inside to put pressure against it and keep it in a closed condition, closed position. So we'll wax this baby up. And to me, the, the as I mentioned before, the wax, I think, also tends to add that one more level of uh, bringing out the detail uh, maybe cleaning off a last little bit of uh, a grime and you know the polish levels the surface I mean that's the whole purpose of this process is to make the surface smooth so you don't get any diffraction of the light on the surface and you get that shine and also it brings out uh, the details that are in the material of the pen So we're going to buff up the barrel. Buff up the cap. Old, old t-shirts are great for this uh, activity. The clip has a nice spring to it. So that's good. So now we have the pen I think restored to a very excellent condition. I uh, love the, the gloss. I love the colors in this pen. Uh, you get more of the detail now, I think, in the resin than you did before. That's uh, one of the things that the polish is able to do. This is a unique combination of colors. I don't think you'll find this in any other Parker. So that's what's nice. So now we're going to work on the pressure bar. Uh, these are tricky because a lot of times the metal has aged and become very brittle. As you can see, the pressure bar broke. Uh, so this really wasn't going to work in the pen. So now we're going to have to go to a replacement bar. So I happen to have some uh, replacement J bars as they're referred to because of their shape. And as you can see, this one is a little bit short, but I think it'll work fine. All it needs to do is have the lever press against the bar here. So the key to getting this to work is to keep the bar in place underneath of the lever. And this is a two-piece one. I think all the ones I have are two-piece, which is a little bit different design than than the one that's there, but that should be able to give it a good uh, consistent pressure against the bladder. The, I think the key to the, getting this to work, and I haven't really done this before, so this is my first time, is to keep it in line all the way as you push it in, and we'll go to our trusty forceps here, which are a, a nice tool. Nope, I need something a little bit bigger. Hold on. So I'm not working at my normal bench, so I don't have these tools readily available, but just this is a slightly larger rod, which will give us more control in inserting the J-bar and keeping it in place. So it's all the way in, and that sounds good. I'm take a look inside, and uh, looks like the J-bar has lined up really nicely with uh, the lever so we're in good shape so one of the things i'm going to do this time that i didn't do with the new banker and probably uh, we ended up with a too big of a nib uh, sorry too big of a sack uh, i have a lot of problems sometimes with the right words to describe the action so we're going to start with a number nine number 18 sack so a little bit bigger and as you can see it it goes in pretty good Yep, I'd say that's as far as the J-bar lever is back there. 
So we're going to take, as we did before, we'll take the, the section, tie it off there, find the spot that they work together, and I'm, I'm going to give it a little bit of a cut off, another couple millimeters so it'll fit easily inside the barrel. We'll trim that. We're going to get our trusty tools and the controversial glue that I use. So we're going to glue this up and then uh, after it sets for a while uh, we'll ink it up and uh, put nib to paper and see how this pen is going to work. That is the true benefit of, of this effort. I just enjoy restoring pens. Uh, it gives me a good feeling to bring something back that's been maybe not used for a hundred years or so and to have it be able to fulfill the, the function it was originally designed for. As you can see this is not the easiest thing to do uh, over the camera but uh, Hopefully you find the little tidbits interesting and the little techniques that I've developed and worked on. And if you want to do your uh, own restoration, I'm certain you develop your own techniques over time. Again, the key thing is to just have the bladder fairly straight. And we're going to set that aside and let it dry. And we'll take a look at it when it's ready to be inked up to write. So now we're going to see if um, all of our work to restore the parquet is going to pay off with a nice writing instrument when we're done. So we're going to do a final assembly. We will talc the new sack. Line it up with uh, the lever. Slides in nice. And it is certainly a nice tight fit. We'll bring in our Waterman Serenity Blue. Yep, that looks good. We'll do one fill. We'll do a wipe. Cap the ink and put it aside. It's a little, uh, eh, it works well without posting. I'm impressed. Very, very pleased. You can hear it squeak a little bit. I would call this a medium nib. It's a little soft, which is nice, but it doesn't spread out much when you uh, flex it. But it is smooth. It doesn't require any pressure to put a line on a piece of paper. Medium wet. It's not as wet as I expected based on the flow that we got with the bulb, but all in all, I'm very pleased. So hopefully this little adventure of uh, restoring two vintage pens has been interesting. Um, I now have two new writers in my collection, which is not small, but that's the fun part of the variety of pens and what you can do with them. So thank you for this watching this long video. Hopefully those of you that have requested it find it useful. Of course I should spell right. So this is the end for now. May all you have great writing experiences and may you have many. Bye.